Bonjour. Je m'appelle Alexandra Harper. <laughs> Just kidding. This video isn't going to be in French, but it will be about the two processes of bone development. The first process is called intramembranosis ossification. If you break up the word, intra means within, membranosis means membrane, and ossification means the formation of bone. If you put the whole word together, it means the formation of bone within a membrane. This process will occur in the utero at eight weeks after fertilization. It will create the flat bones in your skull in addition to the clavicular, which is also known as your collarbone. Intramembranosis ossification takes place in fibrous connective tissue shown in the blue. Although blood vessels are not shown in the picture, they are present. The mesenchymal stem cells, which are in the purple, aggregate alongside the blood vessels. These stem cells have the ability to differentiate into multiple types of cells. Once they are all together, they begin to replicate and divide themselves. Then they transform into osteoblasts, which are bone building cells. The osteoblast then releases an uncalcified bone matrix called osteoid. The bone matrix calcifies with the help of calcium phosphate and other minerals. This hardens the bone matrix. When an osteoblast gets trapped inside a calcified bone matrix, it turns into an osteocyte, which is a mature bone cell. The osteocyte then gets housed inside of a lacunae. The area in which ossification occurs is called the ossification center. So, we got the big picture on the left and the close-up view on the right. So in the green are spicules, which are linear extensions that form off of the ossification centers. The red dots represent the blood vessels. Eventually, the spicules are going to grow far enough that they touch each other. Then they're going to grow around the blood vessels because mature bone cells are highly vascularized. Wow, I just realized this looks like a patch of flowers with the grain and... Okay, anyways... This intricately woven slash honeycomb design that yes took me a minute to draw is known as spongy bone. It is composed of calcified trabeculae, shown in the green. Between these spaces lay vascular tissue which will form into red bone marrow. Through bone remodeling, the osteocytes at the edge of the spongy bone will form into tightly packed bundles of lamellae, which are called osteons. These are the building blocks of compact bone. Through a different process of bone remodeling, the middle portion of the spongy bone can be removed, creating the medullary cavity. Within the periosteum, which is the outermost layer of the bone, osteoblasts still remain which allows the bone to grow in width. This is called apositional growth. The pattern of compact bone, spongy bone, then compact bone again, not only gives the flat bones stability and strength, but also a light weight. Just think if your skull was made of all compact bone, your head would be wobbling all over the place. The second method of bone development is called endochondrial ossification. If you break up the word, endo means within, chondral means cartilage, and ossification means the formation of bone. So if you put it all together, the formation of bone within the cartilage. This process begins two months in utero, when you're a little alien child in your mother's womb. This is how all the bones below the skull are formed, except for the clavicle. They're mainly going to create your long bones, such as your femur, or your short bones, such as your carpals. Alrighty, so step one. Mesenchymal stem cells develop into a body of hyaline cartilage, which will serve as a blueprint for the future bone that will form. It is then covered by a fibrous perichondrium, which will eventually transform into bone after this process. The perichondrium creates chondrocytes, which will help the hyaline cartilage grow in thickness. In step two, the primary ossification center starts to form. So we got some chondrocytes just hanging out in there, and the mesenchymal cells, which are within the perichondrium, differentiate into osteoblasts. The osteoblasts form bony tissue all the way around the diaphysis, creating a bony collar. This basically suffocates the cells because it cuts off diffusion. There's no way to get any nutrients within the cartilage, which kills off the chondrocytes. Now the perichondrium is now the periosteum because it surrounds the bone. 
In step 3, the cells are basically sending out an SOS because they're dying. So the periosteal bud, which is a blood vessel, comes to the rescue with its sidekicks, osteoclasts, and osteoblasts. The osteoclasts are going to be breaking up the calcified tissue, hollowing out the shaft in order to create the primary marrow cavity. The osteoblasts are going to be laying down more bone tissue in order to thicken the shaft. The chondrocytes within the epiphysis end up dying, which in turn creates a secondary ossification center. In step 4, this is what the bone would look like at birth. The primary marrow cavity continues to grow and enlarge. This will in turn make up the diaphysis or shaft of the bone. At the ends of the primary cavity where it transitions from bone to cartilage, this is called the metaphysis. The secondary ossification center hollows out just like the diaphysis did in step 3. This creates a secondary marrow cavity and one epiphysis. In longer bones, another secondary ossification center will appear. In step 5, this is how your bone would look like during childhood. The epiphyses fill with spongy bone, and cartilage is now only found in two places. At the ends of the bone, which is articular cartilage, and this helps with joint movement, and it is also found at the epithelial plate, which separates the primary and secondary marrow cavities at the ends of the bone. This cartilage is highly active and plays a major role in bone elongation throughout childhood and adolescence. Alrighty, so we finally made it to step number six. This is what your bone looks like after late teens to early 20s. All of the cartilage within your epithelial plate gets consumed, which closes that little gap. And just side note, maybe this is why we all aren't giants right now? Even though there are some freakishly tall people. Okay, anyways, so this stops bone elongation. However, the bone can still grow in width. And finally, the primary and secondary marrow cavity merges together to form one single cavity. And there you go. Ta da! Get it? Got it? Good. Cool. Thanks for watching.